And thank you all for coming, and thank you for being here today. It's an honor to be here. I'm excited to be here, back at my alma mater, to share with you my life's work, uh, the pursuit of creativity through art and music. I have an extraordinary life. I uh, wake up every morning. I get to uh, share the opportunity to share my passions in piano and uh, with, my with my art gallery and art. And um, every day I wake up with the chance to uh, be inspired. And through my piano studio, I teach about 25 students weekly. Uh, from ages four to 70, so it's a big, broad range of students. And my students really inspire me. Uh, I, we learn lessons of diligence and practice and performance and persistence. And in my art practice, I am inspired every day. I'm surrounded by creativity. I literally get to look at art every day as a job, and it's amazing. And I work with artists and set decorators curators, museum curators, um, consultants, and collectors, and we find artworks that inspire their environments, that bring inspiration to their spaces. And today I'd like to share with you three key factors in my pursuit of creativity that's helped me become successful. The first is to find great mentors. My first mentor, which probably a lot of you guys had, was your parents. And my parents are actually here from Roswell, far away from Roswell, Atlanta, Roswell, Georgia. <laughs> and um, my dad was my first mentor. Uh, he uh, moved to the States in pursuit of the American dream. He was an architect from Taiwan. And when he moved here, he did what all Asians do, which is start laundromat. And... Uh, <laughs> It was where, um, actually, my sister and I learned the best life lessons about patience, about uh, persistence, and very much an outside-the-box thinker. He always was finding ways of innovating, of growing, of being resourceful, and finding the solution where you least expect it, which is always the case. And so I'm really grateful that they're here today, and also that about the time that I opened the gallery, my father decided that uh, he wanted to retire, and he has now become a pretty successful gallery artist, and he shows at my gallery, and his works have been placed in corporations and, and homes and the like, so. Yay, thanks, Dad. So, when I was in the eighth grade, I, my parents put me uh, into a new piano studio. Uh, her name was Mrs. Betty Nolting. Uh, she lived in Buckhead. Uh, and she was incredible. Not only was she gifted at teaching and, and, and sharing her joys in music, but taught me life lessons uh, that, I've, that I've just grown from. And uh, she recently passed away a year ago in March at 98. But um, what she imparted with me, I held with me for, for all my life. And one of the most important lessons that teachers can teach and what I impart with the artists and the students that come through the gallery is that we are all in life teachers and that we are all students, and it depends on the situation that we're in. And her mentorship and our friendship came full circle when as adults I would spend uh, once a month going to her home, uh, I would share meals with her, I would take her out to the opera, wherever Tomar is, if he's here, uh, I, we would talk about best piano practices, we would talk about ways of playing, ways of practicing, ways of teaching, and we would play for each other. And it was then that I realized that my mentor had become my peer, and it was just a wonderful uh, uh, symbiosis, kind of full circle life thing. So in life, there are also people that teach you what best not to do. And when I started in the art world, when I was 24 years old, I was basically uh, mentored by someone whose traits I didn't aspire to, to put it mildly. <laughs> and, um, but when you're in an environment where your creativity and, and, and your, your soul and your being isn't being nurtured, isn't being fostered, isn't being mentored, then you realize that you start to find lessons of ways of being persistent, of ways of pivoting, of ways of finding courage through the challenging times, and it was such a really great life lesson and learning experience, and I wouldn't have it in any other, any other way, because 
when I was in fear and when I was placed in a place of doubt and uncertainty uh, about myself, about my professional life, that creativity actually becomes essential in that environment. And so when I was in it, I told myself, wow, gosh, what would I do if I would ever open my own gallery? And uh, I guess 14 years later, here I am, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do today had I not been through a challenging time. And so uh, find mentors that nurture your growth, but also find people that both inspire you and challenge you because we're here to grow through our changes and grow through our differences. And we're not here to stay stagnant, nor are we here to just be with like-minded people because I th that's another TED Talk, but that's the world that we're living in now. So, Now, the second factor in the pursuit of creativity is to build a routine. We tend to think as people that when we have structure and when we have schedules and we, when we make plans and when we build routines, that it, it constricts our freedom, that it stifles our creativity. But I would like to argue that actually the, the opposite is true, that when we make a plan, when we build a routine, that creativity has a basis and a foundation to flourish. That plans make room for play, and that certainly is true because I'm playing every day and it's, it's, it's inspired. As a pianist, um, I, like I said, I have 25 students, and eight of them are adults, and some of them actually went to this institution and study music, and, um, and some of them are concert pianists in their own right, and I have to learn really difficult music that, that I have to be able to teach and be effective in my role as an instructor and as a pianist. And so, constantly, my routine is learning the measures, learning note by note, learning the passages, learning the, the music between the notes and how to best express it to, to my students. And if you can extrapolate music as it relates to life, you realize that it's all about building the foundation and the routine for success to happen. It's all about the practice of going full force with whatever you do. And through that practice and through those difficult passages in terms of music and all the, the hard things that we, we, we go through in our practice, in our daily practice, whatever it might be, that we grow from those challenges and we learn from our mistakes. So teaching piano is, 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 uh, is really fun and really inspiring, but, but challenging as well. I think also it's really important to have a routine where you schedule in free time, where you schedule in self-care time, where you schedule in a routine where you can think creatively and reflect back on life and reflect back on what it is you'd like to accomplish, where you've been, where you're going, what you'd like to create, what you want to attract into your life. And that time for me is the mornings. I wake up when I want, probably around like 8 a.m. every day, and I have three hours of unconstricted free time. I wake up, I have a tea ritual, I go out for walks when it's nice out, I meditate, I practice piano, I uh, read a lot, and, and it's that time of self-care, and it's that time of reflection, and it's a time of solitude where I can feel like I can recharge and re-energize and, and rejuvenate. And so, not only is it important to schedule time to meet with people and to take a class and to learn something new, but it's also important to give yourself time so that you can recharge because my life is about meeting people and everywhere I go, I'm always constantly thinking about ways of building community, ways of connecting with another person, truly connecting with another person by understanding where they come from, understanding what differences we have so that I can see a new asset of myself and learn from their experiences. So it's important to give yourself some time in the mornings or whenever you want to give yourself time to have a routine where you can recharge. In 2008, I opened up an art gallery and routine is certainly found in the multifaceted business of running an art gallery. It's, 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 uh, it's like running a little museum, basically. Um, 
So I opened up the gallery, and I wanted it to be inclusive. I wanted it to be inspiring. I wanted it to be inviting. I wanted it to build community through the gallery. And over the last 10 years, since 2008, we've hosted over 100 exhibitions. We've worked with 500 artists from across the Southeast and beyond. We've uh, built collections uh, and worked with teams to uh, place art in institutions and museums and corporations and, 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 and many, many private collections. And what I've found is that the gallery has become a vehicle for art to thrive. The gallery has become a community center for people to come and enjoy art and not feel like they don't know what they're seeing. A gallery is a place where people can feel inspired. And were it not for the structure and the plans and the, the routine that we've built, then we would not be successful because we're constantly planning. We plan our exhibitions year in advance so that we have enough time for our artists to create, so that we have enough time to promote the shows, that we're planning openings and, and, and fundraisers and nonprofit events and pop-up exhibitions and artist talks, and we're always, always planning. And so the more you plan, the better the outcome. Though that doesn't mean you stay true to your plan the whole time, because on any given week, when I go there, I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't know what's going to create, what we're going to create, and I don't know who's going to come in. And that's the exciting and the daunting and the scary part of being a creative, is that we don't know. And so on any given week, a set decorator might come by and want to choose 10 pieces for the next movie that's being filmed in Atlanta. Or a museum might call us because they need pieces for fundraisers and, and the like. And um, so not only is it important to have a routine and have a plan and have a structure, but it's good to be flexible and it's good to be adaptable and it's good to let in something by not holding on to your plans because like they say, life is what happens when you're planning, and so you must allow life to happen by being adaptable and flexible to those changes. And so if I can view the last 15 years or so since I've been here at Emory and, and, and through my professional life, I've um, realized that, that process becomes inspiration and that, like they say, the 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 journey is the destination, and that certainly is true because uh, constraints and routine is what fuels creativity. So the third and final um, uh, pursuit of creativity uh, in my eyes is to build a strong network. And my mother, who is here with my, my father, uh, imparted with me uh, great notions that we are all here to connect, that we're all here to relate, that we're all here to feel inspired. And, and, and true presence and true connection comes from being completely open with another person and being inquisitive and asking questions and, and opening yourself up and, and listening to them and their struggles and their life and their excitements and all the things that, that we, we tend to forget about uh, because we're so connected and we are always so busy to get to the next thing that sometimes we must slow down to allow ourselves to be in the presence of another. And there's nothing as wonderful as being truly in the presence of another and, and sharing and, uh, and, and creating that experience. Because with every encounter and every conversation and every connection, we are co-creating. And creativity is, is about being creative in your thoughts and being creative in your feelings and being creative in your actions and, and applying your own uniqueness to everything you want to create in your life and everything that you've practiced. So if you want to open an art gallery, if you want to start a piano studio, if you want to be a doctor, a dentist, a barista, whatever you do, do it with your own unique flair. The best pianists and musicians are always practicing their instruments. The best artists are always in their studio creating. And if you're successful, then you always have too much to do. The creative life is vulnerable, it's exciting, it's daunting, it's unlimited. So in your pursuit of your own passions and whatever you choose to create in your life, find great mentors, build a routine, 
build an expansive network and start living creatively. Thank you so much.